Thank you. Well, my name is Wendy Tinsley, and my colleague Richard Cooper and I are from Oxford Innovation, and we're sort of heading up this, um, this particular pod, looking at business in the future in Oxfordshire, and looking very much on innovation and how, that, how we will need to innovate. We're human beings, and we will need to innovate um, to keep dynamic, to keep the future going. So I had a look at um, what was needed in uh, an ecosystem that was going to create the kind of environment that would foster entrepreneurship in the future. And really what we need are several components. So we need very much um, a physical hard infrastructure. And we've heard already today about lots and lots of opportunities for companies in Oxfordshire to develop using um, flexible premises. Because we're going to be developing or we're in an innovative society, by its very nature, innovation requires new skills, new sets of ex expertise and new knowledge. And so consequently, we need to be in an environment where that is supported. Uh, we need to know that there's a, the, there's a good knowledge base and there's good access to the kind of skills that are going to be required. Very, very importantly, the thing that fuels innovation and that fuels entrepreneurship is funding and finance. And we'll hear a little later from Richard about how that works in Oxfordshire. And almost as importantly, we need the kind of magic dust that needs to be sprinkled on an area to really attract innovative and thoughtful people into the area and to keep them here. So with all that in mind, have we got what we need in Oxfordshire? And I'm probably going over quite a lot of old ground here because basically um, we have got quite a lot of the components, I think. And I think I'd like to be a little bit controversial in, in saying that um, certainly there's been a lot of research on places like Silicon Valley and trying to bring Silicon Valley, bring all the components, to, you know, just mimic Silicon Valley and Oxfordshire will be the same. <coughs> And I think that the problem with that is that Silicon Valley um, actually came from a very unique set of circumstances. And that if you try and replicate that and impose that on a natural ecosystem, you're going to get distortions and tensions. So we have to look at what we've got and see what we can actually enhance and um, maybe the things that we might need to change. So we are, we heard earlier, we're part of um, the Fast growth, growth Cities Group. That's a group of five cities which have um, the highest financial productivity uh, in the country. We have um, a, a report that's been spoken about earlier today, a report called the Oxfordshire Innovation Engine, which summarizes what we have got in Oxfordshire. So we've got a little bit of that magic dust. We have got a really important global brand We've got unusually two outstanding universities that complement each other very well. We have got a unique grouping of big science and um, other research facilities. So we've got UK AEA, we've got Cullum, we've got Harwell, we've got STFC. I can go on and on and on. We've already got about 1,500 high-tech companies. We are in a brilliant strategic location, so we're 40 miles from Heathrow, 50 miles from London, and we've got some really unique technical clusters. So we are in Motorsport, Motorsport Valley, we've got a gaming cluster, we've got a biotech cluster, cluster, we've got a space cluster. We have got three, also three hotspots for innovation. So um, Vista is a vastly, a rapidly expanding town with a lot of emphasis on the the, um, on eco-technologies, eco um, we've got Oxford and we've got Science Vale. Um, according to a, a council survey, this particular um, county is predicting very, very high future growth. And the LEP, the Local Enterprise Partnership here, actually leads a ranking, the ranking of all 39 local enterprise partnerships uh, over six innovation benchmarks. We've got quality innovation centers. We heard earlier about um, Begbrook, about the Science Park. We've got Milton Park. We've got Harwell. We've got Cullum. Um, we've got the Hack Space. We've got Hack Spaces. And unusually, we've got quite a lot now of lab space for rent. And just my own organization, Oxford Innovation, we provide very, very flexible innovation centers, very flexible innovation spaces. 
and uh, we've got seven in this county alone. We've also got some really stunning uh, companies, and forgive me if one of your companies, I haven't mentioned them here because there were too many to mention in, in a very short space of time, but we've got Reaction Engines, which is, is um, an, an, an astounding company. Uh, they're creating the new reusable space plane, getting very close to that. We've got the likes of Nominet, who are really developing leading edge uh, technologies in, in the internet. Uh, we've got Yasa Motors, we've got Rebellion, we've, which is one of um, Europe's leading independent game developers. So we've got some really stunning companies here. So I think um, in conclusion, what I'd like to say is that we've actually got an awful lot of the, compo excuse me, of the components of a good ecosystem. <coughs> But we have got challenges, there's no doubt about it. And I think one of the, the major challenges right at this moment in time is the infrastructure. So why have I got the right here to stand up in front of you? What do I know about innovative companies and high-tech companies? Well, Oxford Innovation um, has been working with thousands, literally thousands of high-growth and high-tech companies over the last um, four or five years. And from those companies, we've gained an awful lot of information. We've got a lot of data and we've got a lot of stats about these companies. And over all that data, what we've worked out and what we've, what we've used the data to prove is where the key barriers to growth are. Now, I wrote this and I thought, well, actually, I've written what are the key barriers, what's stopping people. Actually, if you look at the other side of the coin, those are also the key enablers. So... If you have got a company that has got incredibly good focus, knows exactly where they're going, has got a talented management team, has got all the skills and all the staff in all the right places in their company, has got exactly the right strategic finance to actually support their growth, has got, and this is something we know a lot about, because we've done a lot of work on, has got the right mindset for growth, and importantly, one of the other things we, we found was that companies actually that capitalized on sp specific trigger points in their <coughs> evolution and, um, were actually the most successful and grew the most, grew quickest. And those trigger points could be anything like, um, could be a new person arriving, a new member of staff, could be losing a key member of staff, could be losing a key contract, could be gaining a, a key contract. But the way the companies handled those key events and those trigger points in their evolution actually uh, determined how successful and uh, they were going to be. So what have we also got here? We have got um, an enormous amount of, of support. And I'm going to literally whiz through this because um, it's all available. A lot of it is, um, is outside. You can see people on stands, but also we, we know a lot about these, these particular organizations. So you can, you can find out more later. But basically, we've got a really good growth hub. Uh, we at Oxford Innovation are delivering Enterprise Europe Network, which is a, um, an organization that connects companies across Europe. Uh, we've got loads of local cu clusters. So we've got a cryogenics cluster. We've got um, the Oxfordshire Biotech Network. We've got Oxford te Technology um, and Media Network. So there are lots and lots of places that companies can gain support. The, there's Oxford Innovation Business Services, ourselves, so we know a lot about how to provide tailored support for companies. There's Innovate UK, and their um, new delivery plan was announced very, very recently. So Innovate UK provides funding for innovative companies, and uh, there has been, um, a, they've decided on a completely new delivery plan, and uh, we have, we're going to hear a lot uh, soon about research, uh, the research and higher education institutes that can also support companies, uh, UK trade and investment and UK export finance, and finally, over to Richard, about investment services.
Okay, many thanks, Wendy. Um, my name is Richard Cooper. I work for Oxford Innovation. Um, I've got three roles. Uh, I've, I'm the divisional manager for our finance coaching uh, division. So any SME or private company that needs to raise finance or needs to exit their business, um, we coach companies around that. I'm also the investment manager for the Thames Valley Investment Network and um, I'm on the selection panel for our SEIS fund. And I'll go into a bit more detail about these things, but my background, I guess, is I'm a, an ex-entrepreneur. I say ex, I think an entrepreneur is probably always an entrepreneur. Um, I've run two startup software companies and raised over 100 million pounds of uh, equity investment, both here and in Australia. So why are we involved in angel investment and what is an angel investor? A lot of people um, know of the term, they've seen Dragon's Den and um, they vaguely know about angel investment, but really what, what happened before um, Angel Networks, which is what we formed, they used to, people, companies used to just go around and knock on doors to high net worth individuals and try and raise some money. Now, about, I think it's 23 years ago now, Oxford Investment Opportunity Network uh, was set up by Oxford Innovation to, to make sure it was easier for companies to raise finance. So, um, it's essentially pooling a lot of angel investors together in what's called a network. Um, so these individuals will invest anywhere between 10,000 and about 300,000 pounds per, per investment. So since then we've, we've grown, we've got now three investment networks, we've got OEI which is a seed group, um, we've got Thames Valley Investment Network which I run, very much looks at speed to market, technology, um, fast moving consumer goods and the original one, Oxford Investment Opportunity Network, which very much is Oxford-centric, looks at university spin-outs, biotechnology, healthcare, that type of thing. Generally, you've got to have some kind of barrier for, the, for that um, division, but Thames Valley Investment Network, it's uh, essentially speed to market. Uh, two years ago, we set up our first uh, SEIS fund. So for anyone who doesn't know SEIS, it's essentially a very good tax break for the investors um, in order to invest in very early stage companies. So the, the companies can't be more than two years old. Now, the first fund last year um, was Oxford centric and we invested in six companies. Um, and, and we've just about closed the round for this, this year. And we invested in another six companies this year. So um, we hope to grow on that and have more funds because we see to encourage angel investing in Oxfordshire, we need to have a fund to invest alongside them. Um, and we see that as quite key. Okay. So this is just giving you a bit of a timeline of what we do to, to companies to get them ready. Um, I'll skip over this. And I just want to go into what the returns are for angel investors. So a lot of people think angel investors are greedy. And the main reason is because nine of the companies will fail and only one will succeed. So that's the reason that angel investors look for 10 times return in their, on their money. And I guess the other things they're looking for is a track record, a decent business model, and a really good management team. Now, one of the things that is, is quite important is, is to get the entrepreneurs to speak early to us so we can get used to who they are and what they're doing to see some of their track record. So generally we see in Oxfordshire and our networks, we're getting a 15% success rate on the companies that pitch. Um, you might think that's low, but actually the industry average is around 9%. And in fact, crowdfunding stats are now only showing 10% success rate. So actually that's not a bad, bad rate. And I think it's because we're quite a established um, a brand as Oxford uh, Investment Opportunity Network. And I see us really sitting in a gold, what I call a golden triangle. Oxford, Cambridge and London is where most the investment uh, are happening in this space. So um, long may that continue. So thanks very much. I'm, I'm sure some of you have some questions later on, but I better hand over to the next speaker before I run out of time. Thank you.